What is going on guys? Joey here and welcome to the iPhone 10 versus the iPhone 14 speed test. I couldn't find a proper speed test between these two on YouTube so let's begin with a boot up test and let's see which one can get there first. Now we are talking about a 5 year difference between these two phones 2017 for the iPhone 10 versus 2022 for the iPhone 14. And the 14 boots up only a few seconds faster. Alright guys, so let's go ahead and take a look at the Face ID now. It's pretty much the same, you're not really unlocking any faster. Alright now, so all apps are closed and let's see if 5 years can make a difference. Geekbench struggles to load on the 14 for some reason. Not sure why though. And here you can see both devices are on iOS 16.4, A11 versus A15. Let's run the benchmarks and see if the A15 Bionic chipset makes a difference. So I sped up this test and the iPhone 14 is a clear winner with a time of 1 minute 21 seconds and a score of 918. And the 10 finished up in 2 minutes 2 seconds with a score of 497. But this is just Geekbench testing. Let's see if there's any difference in the real life. Let's start with the App Store in 3, 2, 1. Okay, let's continue with the camera. About the same. Let's go to calculator. Dead even and the 14 had a jump start there. Let's try weather. About half a second faster on the 14. Let's try cap cut. Again about a second faster on the 14. Let's hop to TikTok. Again the 10 is about one second slower which can add up in the long run. Let's see Instagram. Faster on the 14, but once again, incredible performance on the iPhone 10. We will try the Genshin Impact now, and I guess the game should be several seconds faster on the 14 due to the newer chip. But look, only a couple seconds behind the iPhone 14, which is not a big deal. Okay, let's continue with another game, GTA 3. And mind you, the price difference between these two phones. The iPhone 10 is still a great value. Dead even on GTA 3. And we got a pop-up survey message here that kind of ruined our test, but you get the idea. Let's continue with GTA Vice City. Alright, so the iPhone 10 is playing the intro here because I already played the game on the 14. And last but not least, GTA San Andreas. These mobile game ports are about 10 years old, so they should be well optimized even for the A11 Bionic, which is in the iPhone 10. I played the GTA 3 and San Andreas on the 10 and the game was running super smooth. The 10 can play the games, it really can, but it warms up. And drains the battery a lot quicker than on the 14. Let's try Roblox. Again the same story. And that's actually the most difference I'm seeing between these two devices in this speed test. Let's see Minecraft. Again, almost no difference. Let's go to YouTube. Will we see a first win on the right? 
Nah, YouTube also faster on the 14, but look at this, I mean the 10 can open stuff no problem. And the final speed test by Okla app. Let's run this test together on both devices and see how they perform against each other. Both devices are on the same Wi-Fi. And both the 14 and the iPhone 10 are performing remarkably close in terms of download speeds. Let's see if there's any difference in the upload speed. And I would say it's pretty much the same, even though the iPhone 14 supports the Wi-Fi 6, which the iPhone 10 doesn't. And let's go through the applications now to see if we get a reload here. So far so good on the 14. Everything is loaded in the memory. And I wasn't really expecting a reload on a device with 6 gigs of RAM. Every application is loaded up right where we left it. Okay, Minecraft is reloading, but that's because the app is designed this way, so we won't count that as a reload. Okay, let's check the older brother with only 3 gigs of RAM. No reload so far. This should show us how efficient the iOS really is. Even the Genshin Impact is still loaded. GTA 3 was loading the gameplay I believe. Vice City still there. San Andreas still there as well. With 3 gigs of RAM everything is still loaded. Minecraft we won't count. The iPhone 10 is really good optimized on iOS 16. I'm wondering if it gets the iOS 17. And now the big question. Is it worth upgrading from the iPhone 10 to the iPhone 14? These two phones are not that different after all. Yes, you get the flat edges and a smaller notch and in terms of the display you get a slightly bigger screen and of course the iPhone 14 is faster and more efficient than the iPhone 10. but if you're an average user the iPhone 10 is still a capable phone. You can see the experience scrolling and everything is pretty much the same. You get the 5G connectivity with the 14, but as of today the 4G speeds are fast enough for almost everything. Both phones have 60Hz OLED screens, so the differences are practically identical. The bezels are thinner on the 14, but you won't notice that using the phone day to day. It's really up to you to decide whether the benefits of the iPhone 14 justify the cost of upgrading from the iPhone 10. You can find great deals on the iPhone 10 nowadays on marketplaces like Backmarket. So go ahead and watch my full unboxing and review of this iPhone 10 from Backmarket. And also check out my iPhone 10 battery drain test. And as always, do your own research and make the decision that's best for you. Okay guys, and that's everything from my side for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.